And so with the first round of pit stops completed now for just about everybody, Will Power continues to hold on to the lead. Scott Dixon now running second. Dario Franchitti is third. Then Briscoe and Oriole Serbia, the top five. car series in the beautiful rolling country near Birmingham Alabama our Honda aerial cam with the shots of Will Power on Barber Motorsports Park Will Power is the leader right now of the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama running in second position is Scott Dixon about five seconds behind Robin Miller has some uh, observations Robin well, Bobby, I'm just going to chime in what Wally said. It looked like Dixon might have the fastest car. He's got the fastest lap of the race. The only guy to run under 115. And everybody wanted to know how those red tires, how many laps could they run hard? Will Power ran all 31 laps under 115. So did Scott Dixon, except he, got, he, he managed to get under one, I'm sorry, under 115. Power got all his on, in the 115 bracket. And they just, they just came down and told me that one of the reasons that the, the advantage went up for Will Power was Dixon had a little hiccup in the pits with the fuel sensor and he wasn't ready to go or he thought he wasn't ready to go. So that's why he's falling a couple more seconds behind. One of the things that we always look closely at here is in laps and out laps and certainly Power and Dixon quicker than Briscoe on the way in and very similar time certainly for Briscoe and Dixon on the way out. But those few tenths, they definitely add up. Danica Patrick has moved into the top ten. She now finds herself in tenth position. She is being challenged. Out of it as you can. Court right now. Challenged by Tony Kanan, who is right behind her in that 82 car. Tony Kanan has certainly been on a charge. I got all excited about Viso's move. That was actually Tony Kanan. I'm still learning the wing colors. <laughs> hey, if so, you're having trouble, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm the new guy, and I'm having trouble with these colors. Oh, oh she again. locks it up and again. I'm telling you, she's been really locking that left front up a lot. And, and I'll tell you what, you see how much. Oh, we got trouble. Oh, yellow turn six, middle of the track, four cars. Hildebrand keeps it running. Wow, these guys uh, are keeping their engines running and not creating full course cautions, which is really good. Here it is once again. Graham Ray Hall to the inside. Ooh. Ooh. And Castro Nevis probably got a bump there. Or did the bumping. He was following the course map he did this morning <laughs> with Marty. And you can yeah, see. I don't think he knew he was there at all. But he wasn't in position. So I think that JR, he didn't go all the way to the apex, but, you know, Graham. Oh, I saw an opening went for it. Yeah, yeah hey, he's pretty far back. Absolutely. Hildebrand running in 24th position. He's now a lap behind. Yeah, and he, he's having a kind of a rough day. He stalled it after his pit stop, which cost him a lot of time. And Ray Hall will make a pit stop to get the damage that he incurred in that incident fixed. Graham Ray Hall just radioed in and said the tow link is bent. They're changing tires. He said, we don't need anything new. Just to get the hammer out and we can get this done. They've still got the engine fired, so they'll try to make this as quickly as they can. Red tires on for Ray Hall. Lindy? James Jake's out of the car. Your car was on fire here in pit lane. What do you know happened? I'm not quite sure, to be honest. We came in, we did a pit stop, and then when I left the pits, we had an oil temperature warning on the dash. And then as I was coming out of turn three, it felt, felt very hot in there. So I radioed to the crew to ask them to look at the telemetry and see what the problem was. And then we pitted and the car was on fire. So not a great weekend, but you know, think things are looking a bit more promising. Well, they just pulled the car away. We'll let you go back and meet with your team, Bob. An unfortunate end oh. of the day for James Jakes. Oh, a big spin behind Tony Kanan. That was Alex Tagliani. Oh, now he's got those rear wheels in the sand trap. Let's hope he can get out of there and let's hope they, uh, nope, we have a full course caution. Second one of the day. First coming out on lap one. And here's what happened to Alex Tagliani, car number 77. We just got loose right, right in the middle. You know, you're in that corner for a long time. He's got the blacks on, the track is really, really hot. And he just lost a little bit of group, uh, grip in the rear. And that's a perfect example of loose. Yes. 
And Bob, just <laughs> Bob, you just finished saying how great everyone was doing, keeping the engine running. I know. And you jinxed them. I jinxed them. them. Yep. <laughs> and they're still working on Graham Rahal's car. Now it's worthy saying that Graham Rahal made an aggressive move. And I need to remind myself it wasn't for position because Hildebrand, as we saw, had trouble earlier. So when it's not for position and someone's a lap down, you expect them to give you more room. So my first view, of course, is looking at it for position. And I, you can see then why he would expect that Hildebrand would give him some more room and be aggressive on the inside. Correct. I agree with that. At St. Petersburg two weeks ago, after the first restart, Graham made contact with another car and hit the fence. And they spent a great deal of time in the pits fixing the wing and making adjustments to the suspension. He finished in 17th and Graham Rahal continues to set in pit lane right now as the Homatro safety team is at the Ta Alex Tagliani car getting him refired. But this will pack up the field Wally and give us a another restart. A double file restart with the car that you think is the fastest now right next to one willpower. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Tagliani is moving again. We'll take another break and be back in a moment to Barber Motorsports Park. It's nonstop. You saw during our commercial break that several made pit stops, but a few running up front did so. And so at lap number 39 out of 90, we are still under caution, getting set for a restart, a two abreast restart. It'll be Power, Dixon, Briscoe, Franchitti, Serbia, Wilson, Marco Andretti, and Simone Di Silvestro, seventh and eighth, and Takuma Sato and Elio Castro Nevis, ninth and tenth. coming through and let's go down to Lindy Thaxton. Well, Danica Patrick just came in for her pitch. She got the faster red tires, a brand new set, and also some Sunoco fuel. Didn't want any changes. Her strategist, George Clotes, if you remember, she pitted pretty close to the beginning of the race. He said they're trying to do something different with strategy. Over her radio, interesting, before the race started, she said, hey, guys, to her crew, she said, hey, guys, I'm going to do the best job I can do because I know that you will do the same thing. We're just going to see what happens today. Marty. Well, Lindy, Roger Pinsky making the calls for Ryan Briscoe. This uh, caution may help you out there. Well, I hope so. Yeah, we thought there was going to be a full car shell, and we came in splitting up the cars. But obviously, uh, we're a little bit tight on fuel, but this certainly helps. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, you tried to get him not to pit, didn't you? Well, yeah, but we had a little bit of indecision here, but we was already committed. You can't see the start or the finish line where you come into the uh, pit area there. So, uh, but we're fine. Long race. Worked out for these guys. When he went back out on the track, he was faster than everyone else because he was on those new tires, Kevin. And Marty, this caution worked out well for those on a three-stop strategy like Tony Kanaan. He came in the first time on lap 14. He was due to be in by about lap 40, so this still keeps them on the same sequence. Same for Ryan Hunter Ray. He made his second stop. Kanaan, by the way, went to Reds, and Hunter Ray is back out out there as well. And for those of you, again, who aren't familiar with the series, there are two kinds of tires in ISOT IndyCar racing per weekend. There is a set of reds, and you see the red white walls, the red wa <laughs> side walls, I should say, <laughs> and the black primary tires. Now, the reds are softer compound, but they are faster, but they don't last as long. The black primary tires are a little harder compound, and they last a lot longer, but aren't quite as fast. And something uh, Dario was telling me last night was that the, the problem with the black John is that they pick up a lot of stuff under caution. You really have to keep these things scrubbed off. That's the biggest problem with them when they've run, and they're under a couple laps of caution. They pick up a lot of debris, which if you don't get that debris off when they throw the green flag, it's like being on ice. And speaking of debris, the reason they haven't gone back to green is they're taking the opportunity to sweep some of these corners, especially before a double file restart. You don't want all that debris on the outside line and send them in there two by two. So they've learned some lessons from St. Petersburg. Mike Conway is getting a great opportunity after not getting a chance in St. Petersburg. And he, certainly in the test, was a very fast okay, pilot here at this racetrack. He has the fastest race lap so far on lap number 23. He is, however, being shown at this moment in 20th position. Now the cars begin lining up for the two abreast restart, and this is being done basically for one reason, to make the 
restarts more exciting for you, the race fan. And that is what we're seeing right now as they come side by side, the lead.